and welcome back to my cozy corner of the internet. I'm Maya Star, and today we have another unscripted video where I'll be covering all the latest updates for Maya Star and answering some of your questions about energy healing. At the time of recording, I'm currently working on the Reiki Love meditation track. This will be a track that includes mantras that are taken from the Usui Reiki symbols. There are four symbols that are taught in traditional Usui Reiki and they can be used during your energy healing practice through visualization. Um, but another way of using them is to use the names of the symbols as a mantra. So that's what I've done in the latest meditation track, um, which will, at the time of you hearing this, already be available for you on Spotify, Amazon Music, or your favorite music app. And we're covering a lot about Usui Reiki in this unscripted episode because for the next seven days the Usui Shiki Ryoho Reiki course is available on the Maya Star website at a special offer price. So there's 20% off um, for this week and you can find that by visiting the website or if you subscribe to the newsletter um, you'll get all the information in your inbox in the next few hours. <laughs> Usui Reiki is one of the courses that I recommend for beginners and especially for anybody who wants to work with energy healing as a treatment for other people and the reason I recommend Usui Reiki in that regard is because the structured format where you use different hand positions in a special sequence creates a one hour treatment which is very reassuring for your clients because there are other systems such as Kundalini Reiki where a treatment only takes five or ten minutes and that's not going to be much of an event for the recipient so if you're going to be offering energy healing sessions, then Reiki is the best foundation course because of that structured application method, which can be used with other energy healing modalities as well. Um, once you've learnt the Usui Reiki system, it's a, it's a system that it's easy to build upon because other energy healing techniques will complement it they'll easily build onto it or you can use them as you're performing a reiki session with all of the hand positions so that you know so that it's timed and that's one of the things that i'm planning to do with this week's meditation is add in three minute chimes that indicate when it's time for you to change hand positions in Usui Reiki so that will apply for people who are giving an energy healing treatment to somebody else or using the self-healing technique which has its own hand positions for you to use. So both of those techniques will be taught in the Usui Reiki course if you're interested in taking that and you can read all about that on the website but as I said, I will be covering some of your questions about Reiki. That is the system I get the most questions about, so I've had to narrow it down so that this video doesn't get too long. But I've got some good questions for you, so those will be coming up later on towards the end of this video. Another thing I wanted to mention about the meditation is I got a new musical instrument, which you're not going to be able to hear because the mic won't pick it up, but I thought I'd show it to you because here it is. What do you think of this? I'm sure you can't hear that because this microphone is for my voice and not for this sort of sound, but 
Yeah. That is, has been included in its first meditation now. So you'll have to listen out and see if you can pick up that sound. But it's very unique. It's very metallic. That's what I've been looking for instruments to create some more metallic sounds. So I've got that. Um, and the helix, which is like a spring attached to a metal bowl and makes all kinds of interesting sounds. So I expect that will be coming up soon on a meditation track. You'll have to listen out and see if you can pick out these crazy new instruments. Another thing I wanted to mention related to Suri Reiki is the article that's on the Maya Star website for choosing a Reiki master, things that you might want to consider when you're choosing a Reiki master. And I, I feel like I'm going to have to update that sometime soon because I've slightly changed the way I recommend my courses depending on what the de depending on what the student intends to do with the um, system for example when an attunement is passed on that confers the ability for the student to pass on an attunement however not everyone that's qualified to pass on an attunement is really qualified to pass on an attunement and especially now because I've been teaching for a, a long time, 19 years, a lot of my courses have been passed on and passed on and passed on. And the, if you see them for sale elsewhere, you don't know whether it's actually valid, whether they have a valid lineage. Some people are passing on my attunements without a lineage. If they're passing them on without a lineage, then I can tell you that's not a valid qualification. In energy healing, it's just not. And because I can't validate the authenticity of anybody who might be selling my courses at this point, if you are intending to purchase one of my courses and it's not from me, I recommend that you make sure that the person is properly attuned to the system to start with by inquiring as to their qualifications and checking that they have a valid lineage and also check that they are accredited. I recommend my students if they intend to go on to teach um, apply for their accreditation through the World Metaphysical Association and I was the first school actually accredited by the World Metaphysical Association. Um, so they've been around a very long time. And that way, you're buying from somebody you know that this person has had their work verified and their certification checked out and you know who you're actually talking to. So that's what I would recommend if the if you're considering purchasing a course from somebody who isn't accredited nobody can vouch for them if they're accredited then at least you know somebody has looked into the the quality of their work to make sure that you're not going to get ripped off quite frankly also on the Maya Star website I offer a number of options for those that want to go on to either practice as a healer or teach energy healing. And these are in the form of the diploma options. When you apply for the diploma option, that means you're submitting your written work to me so that I can verify that you have worked with the energy that you claim to be able to work with. So it, it, it confirms to me that you have received the attunements, that you have read the course manuals and come to an understanding of them, and that you have worked with the energy because 
Unless you have worked with the energy, then it can't be fully grounded. And if it isn't fully grounded, you can't pass it on to another person. Um, so, yeah, if you if you see people selling energy healing courses and they are not accredited, then be suspicious and ask a lot of questions just to make sure you're not going to get ripped off. And also ask questions about the materials they provide as part of the course because there are some places that don't provide adequate information, especially if, it, if you're a beginner. You need a lot of background information on energy healing to support you um, in interpreting your experiences so check that make sure that they write their own materials for a start and also make sure that they're providing you with adequate information that means you will be able to use the system you're attuned to and you won't have to go off and buy a lot of extra books and start studying energy healing and spiritual practices from scratch that should that's what people should be providing you with but not all of them are but there's more details on the website if you go to the article for choosing a reiki master i put my thoughts together there but at the time i wasn't offering the diploma upgrade for all courses now i do I offer it for so if even if you're only taking a single course you can still buy the diploma upgrade and on top of that, you can also purchase advanced diploma packages for each course category. So for example, angel energies or Reiki, like, so it would be the Reiki energy healer advanced diploma package or the shamanic energy healer advanced diploma package. And these packages include a series of courses so it builds towards a more comprehensive certification and it's more for those that want to excel in one particular area or if you have a special area of interest like crystals or animal healing or anything like that so that you all the courses are included in the package and the package also includes the administration costs for the advanced certificates so you get um, the advanced diploma but you also if you choose not to complete the advanced diploma by submitting written work for all courses if you're submitting one at a time you'll still get a diploma for the individual courses that you complete to that level so you're rewarded with your certificates as you go along and the same goes for the more advanced packages like the degree packages where you're in, you'll be completing multiple advanced diplomas you still receive your certificates as you go along so if you change your mind or you just don't complete the work it doesn't matter because you will still receive certificates for the work that you have completed it's not that if you don't complete your work you don't get anything at all your work is assessed as you go along so yeah that's something that i wanted to bring up because that article is relevant i think to well it's relevant to reiki courses but really it's it should be like because it was titled how to choose a reiki master or something but really it should be more general because it applies to all the energy healing modalities all of those that i teach all of those that i've channeled and all of those of mine that you might find elsewhere it's important it's important to check out those make sure just make sure that they're accredited and that was another thing i wanted to mention because i get quite a lot of questions um asking about the how can i join the international natural healers association which i used to be a member of and i became accredited by the original international natural healers association and that was back when I got my accreditation with the World Metaphysical Association. And uh, since that time, the International Natural Healers Association has changed ownership. And the new owners, they don't actually offer accreditation. So they don't assess your work or 
validate your credentials. So I, I don't refer students to the International Natural Healers Association now um, because it and also you have to pay an annual fee in order to be featured on their website um, which I mean it's a different kind of thing it's a completely different thing to what the International Natural Healers Association used to be so yeah that's why I don't recommend them as an accreditor because they don't offer accreditation um, but as an alternative the founders of the World Metaphysical Association set up the Accreditation Council of Holistic Healers and that is an accrediting organisation for both healers and teachers and again I, I can refer my students for accreditation through them so if you're one of my students and you want to be accredited by the World Metaphysical Association and or the Accreditation Council of Holistic Healers, let me know and I will send you the link where you can receive a discount for the on the fees for that. Okay, the first question is by far one of the most common questions I get. Um, and it, there's variations on it, but it's usually around I've been attuned to Reiki level one and two. Can I buy the Reiki master level from you on its own? No, I don't offer that. I don't offer partial courses. And there's an important reason why when it comes to Usui Reiki. In an Usui Reiki level one attunement, there are actually four attunements that are imprinted in your energy field in a way and they are activated later on by subsequent attunements but there are variations in different traditions the there's a symbol that is used to send distance healing called honsha zeshonen and some people don't even teach this symbol um, I've found people teaching Usui Reiki Level 2 and not including the distance symbol, which is remarkable. But um, Or there are variations where it's just very slightly different. And again, because you're activating attunements that have previously been imprinted, is it going to be as effective if different or slightly different symbols were used and on top of that there is I don't have the time to verify the credentials of your previous Reiki master I just don't have the time to do that so if you want to complete Usui Reiki master with me you would have to repeat Reiki level one and two but you would be able to call them in over a shorter period of time the assimilation period for Reiki attunements is 21 days but that's because it's a more well they call it a white light energy full spectrum energy and it can be a bit harder to integrate takes a bit longer than other energy healing systems so if you've been attuned to Reiki 1 and 2 already and are repeating those steps with me you don't have to wait the full three weeks for each of those attunements to be fully integrated i would say seven to ten days would be sufficient if you're being if it's a reattunement rather than your first attunement and that just ensures that i can issue a certificate because if I, I can't issue a certificate saying that you have received the attunements from me if you haven't, and I can't issue a valid lineage unless you have received all of the attunements through me. So there are several reasons why I don't offer a partial course in that regard. And also, I can't check whether you've been given the, all of the relevant information with your Reiki 1 and 2 attunements. There's a lot a lot of material that I provide for my courses there are four manuals in fact that I provide with the Usui Reiki course that's about a hundred pages of material but people receive my ebook the book of inspiration 
with my courses, which is another 180 pages of information related to energy healing and spiritual development. So I'm providing you with comprehensive information to ensure you're going to have enough of a knowledge base to be able to use the system that you're attuned to. If somebody is providing you with a couple of sheets of A4 just showing you how to draw the symbols, I don't think that's that I don't think that's sufficient for making a Reiki master. And I also don't think it's appropriate when people recommend you to read a particular book rather than writing their own Reiki manuals. It's a it's a tradition that you would write your own Reiki manuals. That's part of the proof that you are qualified to be able to teach. Um, if you're passing off somebody else's work or using somebody else's work to fill in the blanks, then are you really ready? Definitely something to consider, but perhaps that should perhaps that's something I should have mentioned more under the choosing a Reiki master subject. Okay, next question. I think, did I, did I answer that one properly? Make sure I didn't miss anything. No, you can't buy a partial Reiki course, but you can be reattuned by me. And then you would have your valid certificate, your valid lineage. You can apply for the diploma. You can go on to study the advanced diploma by completing the other courses in that category. You can apply for accreditation from the World Metaphysical Association and the Accreditation Council of Holistic Healers. I think that's about that. Next question. This one's quite common, surprisingly common. I fell asleep during my Reiki attunement. Will it still work? The answer is yes. Technically, it will still work, and it and it's not too uncommon for people to fall asleep during an energy transmission of any kind, whether it's an attunement or just an energy healing session, um, like the ones that I send through Maya Magical, the healing intensive energy transmissions. Sometimes people fall asleep receiving those as well, but it, specifically Reiki is a very, very relaxing energy to work with. Not just during attunements, but also when you're giving yourself healing treatments later. It can really help you sleep. It's very relaxing, it, especially when you're working on the lower energy centers. It can help you feel more grounded. Um, so that that's a good way to wind yourself down for bed. Even if you're just working with a few of the hand positions, um, that can really help you relax and sleep well. And during an attunement or a self-healing session, it's not unusual to fall asleep simply because it is a relaxing experience. The energy is very relaxing and soothing. But one thing I would say is if you do fall asleep during an attunement, it can be a little bit worrying for your conscious mind. Your, your conscious mind isn't on board necessarily with your experience that may have been completed while you were unconscious. So I would recommend that if you fell asleep during an attunement that you do go ahead and repeat the ritual for receiving the attunement which is outlined in the Book of Inspiration Part 1 if you're studying with me. So um, I'd recommend you repeat it just to send a message to your conscious mind that this process has been completed, even if the uh, actual attunement was received while you were unconscious for part of it. It's just a better way of um, doing it because otherwise, Later on, when you're working with the energy, you might have doubts about whether you even received the attunement properly. And 
and that could really affect your energy work. I'm one of the people that enjoys lying down while I'm doing my energy work, but that, that that's not good for all people. Some people fall asleep too easily and would benefit from sitting while they're doing their energy healing practices, receiving attunements and so on. So yes, you would receive the attunement but I would still recommend completing the process fully to ensure that you, your conscious mind accepts the new energy and allows you to use it because otherwise you, you're, you're not going to feel as confident. One final question is, well this one again, there'll be variations on this, but the, this was this is just the most common one that and it was the first one I found when I was looking through my file. But can I use the violet flame during a Reiki session? And the answer is yes you can. And you can actually use pretty much any any energy healing modality alongside Reiki. Because Reiki is a full spectrum energy healing system, other modalities that are focused on one specific vibration such as the Violet Flame of Saint Germain or the Crystal Rose or Solar Goddess Radiance, Fun Yin's Compassionate Heart, Lotus Fountain Healing, for example, they are working with a specific energy vibration and the specific energy vibrations are obviously part of that full spectrum of Reiki so it, you're not at odds with the Reiki energy if you combine another system with it um, but also I would say some systems work really well as opening or closing techniques to, to use before your Reiki session and after your Reiki session like um, for example violet flame is great for clearing negative energy so if you felt that a lot of negative energy was cleared during the session you might want to finish up by using the violet flame to fully complete that part of the work or you may use another system to help with grounding and creating a protective aura like the light sanctuary activation or something like that. So certainly think about it beforehand, especially if you're new to it, it can be a bit confusing to combine energies in one session. But if you plan it out beforehand, like that you're going to be working with one particular system in the opening then you'll complete the Reiki pos hand positions but then as you get to, towards the end you're going to bring in start bringing in the violet flame and you'll finish off with the violet flame and then extend that throughout the room to cleanse the space sort of thing before grounding the energy and establishing some good energy protection perhaps with the Kuthumi's crystalline light or something like that so but plan it out beforehand if you're new to doing that because otherwise it can just throw you it could you, you can end up thinking well which energy should I work with next what should I do next have a little bit of an idea going into it how you're going to work with it Sometimes when you're more experienced you will feel guided to connect with particular energies that will be beneficial for that particular client or for that particular situation. Um, so stay open to the possibility that you're going to be prompted as you go along but that will likely come when you're more experienced of working with combinations of different energy healing modalities so I would still recommend that you start out by making a note of what you're going to be working with what ahead of time so that your session runs more smoothly you don't end up sitting there thinking uh, oh what should I do next um, which energy would be right for this um, I'm not sure um, 
Let me look it up. No. <laughs> but yeah, so plan it out a little bit beforehand, just enough to give you the confidence. And then as you get more experienced, you will naturally feel what energy is most appropriate and you'll be able to identify it when you feel called to a particular energy. Um, and I'm going to address another question, which is not one I've written down, but this is a very common question as well, um, where people will indicate, I'm no good at visualizing. Can I still work with Reiki if I can't visualize the symbols? Now, with, there are a lot of energy healing modalities that don't require visualization, and to an extent, you would be able to work with Reiki. You wouldn't be able to pass on attunements and you, you would find distance healing a, a challenge if you weren't going to learn those symbols because until you've learned those symbols, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be properly activated in your energy field. If you think about it, the attunement places them there, but you have to use them for that energy to be fully integrated. So I'd have to say you could only partially use Reiki without using the symbols. You still need to learn them. And another point would be if you're no good at visualization, then surely you need to practice. And that would mean Reiki is a great system for you to learn because it's got symbols that you would need to practice visualizing. I'm in the business of helping people get better at stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would recommend that you um, develop the skill. If you, if you say you're no good at visualizing, but you want, want to learn Reiki, then use that as your motivation to improve your skills because they will carry forward into other areas. And with the Reiki symbols, although the one that people leave out, Honsha Zesho Nen, is quite a complicated symbol to draw, the other symbols are not, perhaps the master symbol might be a little bit for some people, but Seihiki and Chokure are very simple symbols and you would be able to learn those quite easily. And you can learn to draw them and then gradually learn to visualize them. And that would make your work a lot more powerful and also allow you to use visualization in other energy healing modalities, even those without symbols, but where visualization can help in the activation. A lot of my attunements and techniques require a sort of meditation for working with them and it can really help if you're able to visualize those energies that can really help to intensify the experience so i would say working with any energy healing system will improve your visualization skills but usui reiki is particularly good because it has three symbols at level two and one symbol at the master level so it's only four two of them are quite complicated and two of them are not so you've gradually you can gradually build up your skills with that and i think that's everything that i wanted to cover i guess i'll wrap this up and thank you for spending some time with me today i'll be back again in a week and i hope you will as well but in the meantime, I wish you peace, prosperity and progress in all you do. With blessings.